is there anything close to heaven here on earth? And yes, there is. The closest thing to heaven here on earth is Christ in you, the hope of glory. But we want to talk about our salvation. I want to talk about it in three tenths. Kind of refer to it earlier. But I want to look at <clears throat> justification, sanctification, glorification. And let's see if we can make some sense out of it. But let's pray. Father, I thank you, love you, praise you, worship you, adore you. For Father, we have no other God. We want no other God. We got the God. And Father, I just thank you. I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. I thank you for all he's done for us, with us, in us, and through us. All for your glory. Now, Father, let us see what you have already done and said. And we will give you praise and glory. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to go and we want to read one verse because I think God wants every part of you saved. And that verse is in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely and may your spirit and soul and body be preserved completely without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is, he wants to save all of you. Not just your spirit, your soul, and your body. And so, but let's give a, let's even put a handle on justification. Because justification is followed by sanctification. Sanctification will be followed by glorification. In that order. First of all, justification is a work of God. It's not a process. It is one act of God. In one moment, at one time, in your life, my life, and every other born-again believer. And it is he makes you right with him. People were always trying to get right with God in the Old Testament. But through God's grace, he has gotten you right with him by way of justification. Justification, Paul explains it. In uh, Romans chapter f 5, and he talks about you being justified. And that's what happened when you received the gospel, when you accepted Christ as your personal Savior. At that moment in time, you were made completely right forever and ever and ever. And that was never to change. Because he didn't just declare you right. He made you right. It wasn't just a proclamation. It was a transformation. And he transformed you. He did some work on you on the inside. And we call it justification. Sanctification. After justification you immediately move into sanctification. That's where you are being set apart from the world, set apart from sin, set apart from darkness, and now you are in a growth pattern that grows you spiritually as you move closer and closer to be transformed into the image of God's Son, Jesus Christ. 
And then after, at a certain period in time, we're going to talk about that, but at a certain period in time, now it's time for glorification. Now we go back, we reach back, we go back and get your body. And then we glorify your body and make it as perfect as it was designed to be. So there's several stages we need to kind of walk through. But let's see what happened when uh, in this uh, first stage. I just want to get a closer look uh, because something happened that you need to be aware of. The first thing that happened is you receive life. Divine life, the life of God in your soul. You also receive a new nature. The very nature of God now takes up residence in your being. And then he doesn't stop there. He gives you a new heart and a new mind. And in the new heart and a new mind, he goes in and writes his laws, his statutes, his audience, his commandments, his precepts, his testimonies, his judgments on your heart and mind. So nobody would ever have to say no to Lord because you will know him inside and out. Then he imputed righteousness to you. Now all this happened during your justification. And then not only that, and the righteousness is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Everything he accomplished here on earth, being in perfect obedience to the Father, he gave to you at the point of your salvation, and it was imputed to you, imputed righteousness. And we could call it positional righteousness, because from that standpoint, from that base, now, you, now we need to grow in our practical righteousness, our day-to-day -day righteousness, bringing our practical righteousness up to our positional righteousness. But that's not all. You received a new inheritance. You just became joint heir with Jesus Christ. Whatever belonged to the Son now belongs to you. Be, and according to uh, Romans 8, you have inherited the things that the Father has given to the Son. And then you also receive a new covenant. Uh, and we'll call that you are covered in a robe of righteousness decked with the jewels of holiness. In other words, in this new covenant, because God does not do anything with anybody without a covenant. The way he functioned with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is with a covenant. The way he functioned with the sons of Israel is with a covenant. The, re the way he functioned with uh, Moses and the other prophets were a, a relationship, a covenantal relationship. And he gets us in the covenant. And I mentioned something about it when I said that he gave you a new heart and a new mind. That was a part of that covenant. It was implemented at the Lord's table, the last Lord's table, in the upper room with uh, his disciples from started out with the covenant. I mean, started out with the uh, Passover. And from the Passover, it moved right into the new covenant. And, uh, and, and now we have, we are in the new covenant. So we got all this at justification. The moment we were justified, we received all of that. And uh, uh, in fact, let me put it in this term. You were moving from death unto life, from Satan unto God, from darkness into light, from evil into good, and from hell into heaven. All this supernatural stuff happened at the point of your salvation. So you are very, you are 
a, a very important entity of God's program, of, Paul, of God's program. So when Paul says in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely and make your and may your spirit and soul and body be preserved completely <clears throat> without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. When he came, we were changed, forever changed. And we're going to go back in future broadcasts and look at what was that change? How does it flush out today? How do we put legs on it and cause it to walk? That's what we're going to see as we take a close look at Romans chapter 6. But let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for today. I want to thank you for what you are introducing us to, getting us into I want to thank you, O oh God, because, Father, without justification, without sanctification, and without glorification, Father, we are outside of your kingdom, bottom line. But I thank you we are not outside of your kingdom because we've already experienced these things within our hearts and in our souls because you love us. And we thank you and we love you and we praise you. Now, Father, bless us with more and more revelation, inspiration, and illumination so we can see how you've blessed us and begin to join the rest of creation, the 24 elders, the four living creatures, the myriads and myriads and thousands of angels as they worship you. Now we have a right to worship you because we have been made alive. So we just thank you and we love you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.